Greetings, beloved. As we move into this weekend, we are the fifth Sunday from Resurrection Sunday, moving towards Ascension Sunday and ultimately towards Pentecost. The gospel reading from the lectionary is from John's gospel, the first 14 verses, at the beginning of Jesus' farewell discourse on the night that he prepared the Passover prior to his execution. And he's going to invite the disciples to wrestle with a lot of things that they're not prepared to wrestle with, not because he hasn't prepared them, but because they haven't fully recognized what he has been telling them, in particular for the last three months about the cross. Their expectations about a Messiah are about to be shattered because like Cleopas and Mary on the road to Emmaus, they were expecting a conquering king, but they didn't understand that it was his suffering that was going to be the pathway to conquering. And here in John 14, he speaks on many levels, not the least of which is to talk to us uh, about the fact that uh, this is our journey through the cross with Jesus. It's our union with Christ. It's also our hope for life after death that he's talking about. He's our savior. He speaks of his father as Abba in the Greek here. And this is all about how we pray within that context. We often take the last two verses in John 14, 1 to 14, personally as a commodity of what I can get from God when we divorce it from the entire context. But listen to the entire 14 verses and I'll just make a few comments. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do, know, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact, will do greater works than these because I'm going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name so that my Father may be glorified in his Son. If in my name you ask me anything, I will do it. And so here's this opening line, do not let your hearts be troubled. They're, they're anxious right now because Jesus is talking a language of crucifixion that they're not ready for. They're not even prepared for what's about to happen during the next 48 hours. It will decimate and deconstruct every hope that they think they have. They will walk away from the cross disillusioned. They will be shattered not because Jesus didn't prepare them, but because they kept looking for an expectation of Messiah that was a conquering king, void of being a suffering servant. And the way to conquering, the place of conquest, is the cross, not triumphalism. It is the cross that is the throne of God. And Jesus reveals that he and the Father and the Spirit mutually indwell one another. The Father dwells in me and I in him. And remember, he receives the Spirit at his baptism. So this is a revealing, again, in the language of Jesus himself, of the triune God of love and grace, who continually 
exists in communion in his very being. And he is inviting them to come to a place of realizing you believe in God, believe also in me. In other words, I'm about to go through something that is necessary for where you will be when I'm through it. But you need to believe in me while I'm going through. Now, at one level, we could look at this as the work of the high priest who goes into the Holy of Holies and then comes out again to receive them to himself. But ultimately, it's talking about our eternal state because Jesus is about to enter through the door of death, swallow it up in victory, and bring them to life eternal. In his Father's house are many dwelling places, and he's going to prepare a place for them. Now, this is not about a mansion up in glory. The dwelling places, very simply, are in God himself. God is, as Robert W. Jensen says, a God that's roomy, and God makes room for us in his communion of his very being, which is what the fellowship of the Son of God is all about that Paul speaks of in 1 Corinthians 1. God makes room for us. And so believing on Jesus isn't turning it into a mental credence. It's actually relying on the relationship of abiding with him by the Spirit before the Father so that we can, by reliance on his indwelling spirit, work as he works. So when he says, you're going to do more than I did because I'm going to the Father, he's talking about his mediatorial role as priest and intercessor and king. He is going to now be moving through the entire body in his role as intercessor at the right hand of the Father, seated at the right hand of the Father, so that we can come into union with Christ and do the ongoing work of the gospel. And so there's a lot here that's tied to if we're going to do the work of the gospel, whatever we ask in his name that's tied to that, he's going to do that with us, through us, and for us. And so when God makes room for us, you want to realize once again, as Robert W. Jensen said, that God is a place all by himself. And because God is a place, time and space are existing within God and God makes room for us and God has all the time in the world, all the time in the world to be with us. And not only now, but in eternity from the ages to the ages, God will continually be with us and we will be with him. And death will be swallowed up in victory. So our ultimate hope is that wherever Jesus is, that will be heaven for us. And so when they say, we don't know where you're going, he's been telling them for three and a half months that he's returning to the Father. And the way of his return is through death, burial, and resurrection. They won't fully appreciate all of this until Pentecost. That transition period from resurrection to Pentecost, which includes Ascension Sunday, where they still doubt, will be finally satisfied when the Spirit of Christ comes to indwell them and they come to know the Spirit of truth who leads them and guides them into all truth from the inside out. Beloved, we are facing transition right now in a nation and on a global level that is bringing us to a new normal. We've not been here before. And we're having to manage not having been here before and navigate waters that we've never been on before. And I hear the Lord saying, let not your hearts be troubled. You believe in God and Jesus is saying, believe also in me. Believe also in me. He's the captain of our salvation. He's the captain of the ship. We're going to get to the other side. And we're going to get there whole and safe and well as we continue to practice those things called practicing the presence of God. Abiding in the fellowship of the Son. Communing with the Father through the Son by the Holy Spirit. That is what believing on him is all about. 
Truth is a relationship with a person. It is abiding communion with the one who said, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. I'm making room for you. Wherever you are, God not only has made room for you, he's making room for you. And Christ is calling us from that future of roominess to that future of roominess. And in the present reality, he's going to enlarge our footsteps under us and bring us to an abundant place of flourishing. Sunday's going to be a great day in the house. Come expecting for those of you that come to drive in church, those of you that have the need to be home because you're vulnerable, please be faithful and be online. But I promise it's going to be significant. Reach out to friends and neighbors. Have them tune in. It will encourage them as well as we continue in the themes we've been layering for the last number of weeks. I love you. See you Sunday.